In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I ask you, confirmands, what is confession? What sin should we confess? Which are these? We confess together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray to the Lord. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Where is the truth about our Savior Jesus Christ made known? Why do we call the Bible the Holy Scriptures? The Old Testament reading from God's Word for the day of Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Be God. The epistle reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? 
Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because you do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will clear, declare to you, the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I say that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a dangerous thing to baptize a person, a dangerous thing to baptize a child, an infant, because when you have been baptized, you have been made one of God's children, precious to him. And when you belong to God, then you are a target of Satan. When you belong to God, Satan wants you to belong to him. So it is a dangerous thing to baptize a child. If you would turn in your hymnals together with me to page 270 in the front part of the hymnal, you will see the order of holy baptism, the sacrament of holy baptism, the gift of God to these candidates, to each and every one of us. So the middle of page 270 on the left side there, it says, the pastor addresses the candidate and asks the following questions. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Most of you were too young to even know what that question was about. And so your parents, sponsors, adults, people who loved you and cared for you in your life, answered that question for you. And there was a whole series of questions that were asked of you before you were too young to say much about it. That's on purpose. It's to bring you up in the Christian faith before you have time to figure out that you want to run the other way. Today, you have opportunity to run the other way because let's turn to page 272 for the order of confirmation. Confirmation is not a sacrament, it is a rite. But in confirmation now, you're going to be asked the same questions. Do you renounce the devil, his works, his ways? Do you believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And today, they will not answer for you you will answer for yourself. You will stand here before God, before the congregation and before the world, and say yes. Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. No, I renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways. And then we get to what I consider the most dangerous question of all, and the question that I reviewed with you the very first time we sat down and began confirmation uh, two COVIDs ago, and, <laughs> and I feel kind of bad because your class, your year and a half of instruction was basically done online, which we know how great that can be. So uh, you're all welcome to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, as many hours as you'd like, to catch up on anything you feel like you might have missed. But we're gonna ask the serious question today would it consider possibly the most dangerous question at confirmation? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I consider that to be a rather serious question. And it is a question that each and every one of us is asked almost on a daily basis. Do we continue steadfast? Do we hold fast to the confession of what we've learned? Do we hold fast when the devil, the world, and our own flesh would rip us away from Christ and his word? Notice it doesn't say this congregation. There are those who get confused to imagine that their adherence to their own congregation is the only one that matters. And I know growing up in my church, there were people that would go away and move away, and they would say, I just can't find any church like the one I grew up in, as their allegiance was to that congregation. Our allegiance is to Christ and church big C and the confession of the faith. This isn't the only congregation that you will probably be a member of. We pray that you are a member of a congregation that continues steadfast in the confession of the faith that you learned here. 
Now, when you answer that question, you do so, you say, I do by the grace of God. You see, it is not I do, period. I do as if it all depends on you. It's I do by the grace of God. Now, do you notice this morning when you were reading, young people, with me, you were answering the question, the first page, the question about um, your place in line. And then the congregation confessed its sins with you. So your volume was like this, and then the congregation joined you, and all of their voices were with you. That is a picture of how it is in your Christian life. I do so by the grace of God. I do so by the grace of God that is exhibited by my parents, sponsors, mentors, congregational members who love me and who stand behind me and confess the same faith with me. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, we all do with you. You are not alone in this. You are not a single Christian floating around in the world trying to find your place. You are grounded and rooted in the confession of Christ, and you're grounded and rooted in that confession with us. And not only with us, but with the whole Christian church on earth that stands behind you and with you and confesses the same Jesus. And we all do that, not on our own, but because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit ever dwelling with your gifts of grace. Jesus just said, he will take what is mine and make it known to you, give it to you, all the Father has is mine. Therefore I say he will take what is mine and declare it, say it, give it unto you. The Holy Spirit dwells in you and has ever since your baptism. Every time you hear the word of God, the Holy Spirit is indwelling in you and holding you to the faith. And the Holy Spirit is holding all of us to Jesus in the confession of the holy Christian faith. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in each and every one of us, holding us forward together. We are behind you because the Holy Spirit is behind you and with you and with us. There are lots of things in this life that are going to try to pull you away from this confession and faith. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and faith, word and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do so by the grace of God. I pray that you will not face death for your confession of the faith, but there are no guarantees. We should stop pretending that there are. All of the early apostles, except for John, were put to death for their confession of the faith. And all across this planet, even today, there are those who are put to death for their confession of Christ. We do not know what our future will hold. In our reading for today, you might notice in our gospel reading, there is a dot, dot, dot. There are some verses that are skipped over. And here's what Jesus says in the skipped over verses. I have said these things to you to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, an hour is coming when those who kill you will think that by doing so, they are offering worship to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father or me. When I have said these things to you, but I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. Are you surprised that the reading was left out? No one wants to come to church and hear about being killed. But that is exactly the words of Jesus. We live in a place where you probably will not be killed for your faith, but you may be shunned for it. 
You may be fired for it or not offered a job for it. You may be put out, not of synagogues, but of polite society for your confession of Jesus. But we stand strong in Christ, and we stand strong in the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, the one who comes to testify to Jesus to us and the one who dwells in us to bring us to testify to Jesus and to confess him before all the world. It is our only hope, our only strength. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Father. Christ, who was on the cross for us, who gave his life for you, that you would be forgiven and cleansed and made whole and belong to him forever. And his spirit who holds you to him and brings you forward. And the Father who holds it all in his hands. In his most holy name, amen. I'll ask the, um, we continue as is printed in our bulletin. In the rite of confirmation, we individually affirm our baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us joyfully share in the catechism section on holy baptism. First, what is baptism? Which is that word of God? Second, what benefits does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe in it, as the words and promises of God declare. Which are these words and promises of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Okay. I invite the congregation to turn page 272. You should already be there in your hymnal. And I'll ask the confirmation students to please, confirmants to please stand. Beloved in our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ says to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will deny also before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of our Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, yes. I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. You confess that creed today by yourselves, but every time from now on when you confess that here, you will confess it with the whole church together. We'll all be behind you with it. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you've learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. 
Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you, continue to continue stead- do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Elena. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthening you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Elena, your scripture verse is John chapter 14. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Kaylee, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthening you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Kaylee, your Bible verse is Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Lillian, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthening you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Lillian, your verse is Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Tyler, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of the water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthening you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Tyler, your verse is Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Congregation, please stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling both with the heart to believe and the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism you have knighted your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
peace be with you. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. In our prayers this morning, we include also prayers for um, Andrea Racky, um, who is in need of uh, healing following surgery. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Glorify his name among us in every word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, give hope to your people in the midst of this world of death and despair. Put your spirit within us to believe, to live, and to serve according to your promises and commands. Lead our homes to confess our confidence in you, both now and at the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your spirit, you have established your holy church on the proclamation of Christ our Savior. Sustain the apostolic preaching to the ends of the earth, that in every tongue the mighty works of God in Christ may be heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give us good government and leaders who are both honest and faithful. Even so, let us look eagerly for your son's return, and let that be quickly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your name, O Lord, praying in your spirit to help and save all, especially Annette and Barbara, Bob and Bruce, Carrie, Charles and Wilberga, Chris and Dick, Dorothy, Emmy Lou and Gerald, Hattie, Jane and Jim, John, Justin, Karen, Kate and Kyle, Lainey, Marjorie and Mary, Melody and Phyllis, Rita and Shayla, Sherm, Susie and Zoe, Andrea, and the family and friends of Tammy. Renew the face of the earth. Look with favor on your creatures and fill the hearts of your faithful, kindling them the fire of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Richard, Carl and Andrea, Charles and Paula, and all those who celebrate their birth and anniversary, that you, O Lord, would strengthen them for another year of life in your grace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, send the Holy Spirit upon your faithful people that convicted of their sin, they may also be convicted, convinced that the righteousness of Christ is theirs, and in such repentance and faith receive the things of Christ declared in the supper, his holy body and precious blood for the forgiveness of sins. Unite us by your spirit of truth in faith and confession, and comfort us with the knowledge that this world's prince is judged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through your Son, you promised your Holy Spirit, who would convince the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Enlighten our hearts so we confess our sins, obtain everlasting righteousness through faith in Christ, and through every trial and temptation, abide in the consolation that Christ is Lord over the devil, death, and all things, and that he would graciously deliver us from all affliction to make us partakers of eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A few announcements this morning. I encourage you to take a look at the announcements uh, in the bulletin. Um, also note that next Sunday there are some changes uh, with how we're doing worship on Sunday mornings and Wednesdays. I'm not going to announce that today. It's too confusing starts next week. Um, also, there are under the table, there are the baby bottles. Um, those are being gathered until Father's Day for clarity, the Pregnancy Care Center in our, neighbor, in our community, and so we ask you to support them uh, generously for the good work that they do. Um, for confirmation today, for communion, uh, there are many visitors with us today. So uh, after the song, uh, you're invited to come forward you take the body and blood of our Lord um, yourself and then come over to each side of the rail um, and space out, um, space out yourselves. And then each table will be dismissed. Um, after you're dismissed, we have been just going out to our cars and leaving. Starting next week and today, 
you have the option to go out to your car and go uh, for distancing, or you may stay, return to your seat for a benediction and then a recession following the service. The confirmands will be processing out at the end of the service, and then they will be outside uh, so you may greet them and encourage them in their faith uh, as you leave today. Um, after everyone is gone, then the conference will come back in to take pictures. If you'd like to take pictures with them, you're invited to come back in following the service. I think that's all the announcements, pretty much. Um, thank you for your continued support of faith. Um, your generosity and offering is very helpful for the mission of the church. We continue with our offertory hymn, Fight the Good Fight, number 664. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. I exhort you in Christ that you give attention to the testament of Christ in true faith, and above all, take to heart the words which Christ presents, with which Christ presents his body and blood to us for forgiveness, that you take note of and give thanks for the boundless love that he showed us when he saved us from the wrath of God, sin, death, and hell by his blood, and that you then externally receive the bread and wine, that is, his body and blood, 
as a guarantee and pledge. It is well that we hear again, what is the sacrament of the altar? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and the wine, instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and to drink. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated to sing. <clears throat> 